Okay, so we're recording. This is the community meeting of uh, PyScript on the 19th of March 2024. Um, sounds like I'm doing a captain's log star date 3.796-2 or something, but there we go. Um, so uh, I'm driving uh, because through a process of being volunteered, uh, I'm driving because uh, <laughs> nobody else wants to do it, basically. And Madora is taking the notes. Um, we have agenda items as well. Um, so let me just go check out those notes to make sure I can see uh, what we're doing. So we don't have any announcements. Uh, we have introductions. If you are new to our meeting, um, please introduce yourself and say hello. So I know we have at least one person who's new, Model T. Uh, you can have anything, any colour but black, right? Hence the black shirt. I don't know. Uh, Model T. Uh, Model T, would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> So great, great, uh, great, uh, great reference. And the fact that you knew that most people don't. Um, the name is Michael, mm -hmm. Michael Ford. Um, in college, I was Model T because of Ford and MT are my initials. So it's um, pretty clever, I guess. I didn't come up with it. Um, so I'm on, I've been reading up on what you're doing with PyScript. The technical challenges you're overcoming are all inspiring. And um, I'm a longtime JavaScript developer. I have taken on a task that was all part-time last year, and I've just moved into a full-time role on this, to rewrite Excel as a React component with Python as the underlying execution engine. Um, there's a couple of initiatives like this. Mine's different in that it's meant to be embedded in your, in your web applications as opposed to a SaaS offering. Um, you're welcome to go look at it. It's sheetextralarge.com. And I am starting in April the the Python integration using PyScript with an expectation to have that out in July. So if you go look at it now, you won't see the formulas. That's sort of not in the release. But the UI is there. It's expected to support a million rows, um, all of Excel formulas, all of Excel functionality. You can import and export with perfect clarity, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm on the call because some of the problems you're solving are just general JavaScript problems. I'm on the call because as a non-native Python developer, I want to learn how you approach and think about problems. So I'm mostly going to lurk, but um, that's who I am. And again, kudos to what you guys are doing. It's um, a collection of really, really clever people. Thank you very much. Really appreciate your warm words. Uh, really do. Because generally, this being an open source project, the only things we ever get to see are bug reports and complaints. So it's nice when somebody turns up and goes, hey, you've done a really great job. Uh, <laughs> Come on, that's not this is. Yeah. The web, the thread, just the fact that you're able to make JavaScript do the web threading is by itself. That that's a that's an all inspiring thing. Forget about everything else. You're doing. Fabio, Fabio, I'm uh, yeah. I just want to <laughs> add a comment on top of this that um, this is, this is great for us as well because we would love to know more about integrations with PyScript and how can. You know the two JavaScript and Py, Python can work together, especially with React apps and major you know web frameworks, because we want to make sure that the process is as seamless as possible. So, any feedback is very very welcome. Um, I, I'm putting my hand up because I'm British and I'm even too polite to interrupt myself, even though I'm the chair. Um, the <laughs> you also should probably know that we have several people in our community who are interested in spreadsheets as well. So someone to look out okay. for is Chris Lafra, who is on our, our oh. Discord. Um, Chris okay. uh, is uh, he's been working on all sorts of strange and interesting things. I'm not quite sure that you're you you're both in you're both in the spreadsheet space but i think yours is more like a react component that you drop into something his spreadsheet thing is more like google google sheets or something like that he's he's building something like that but i i imagine the two of you uh would walk into a bar and spend six hours talking to each other and have a great old geek out time so, and things like well, that. i know chris i know chris um so i'm my background i don't want to spend this whole meeting on me but my background is from wall street yeah. So I, I know, I knew, I'm good friends with Chris's old boss, Karat Singh, who did a bunch of stuff for Goldman. So I come from the JP Morgan, Goldman, Bank of okay. America. Understood. Just wanted to make and sure that the, that the yeah, links were yeah. made. No, so yeah, I, yeah, I'm well aware of what he's doing. It's, yeah. it's, um, I'm not trying to rewrite everything in Python. I'm trying to make it so that it becomes a Jupyter, 
a Jupyter Python. I, I want to make Python available to web developers. Not make spreadsheets available to Python native developers. Yeah. So slightly different bend on the same problem. Yeah. Cool, cool. Just wanted to make sure. Fantastic. Okay, so yeah, no, I appreciate that. Yeah, so that's the introductions out of the way. Um, announcements. Um, there are no announcements apart from we had uh, a release last Friday uh, where we did some things. Uh, there will be a coming up release pretty soon, I imagine, where we hope to get some interesting MicroPython things and some refinement to the stuff that Andrea is about to talk to. And talking of which, um, the uh, I'm going quick because I know people have to drop early. So on the agenda items, um, Andrea, you are first, matey, with a journey to a better simplified fetch. And then when you finished, uh, Michael can uh, talk about his um, spreadsheet stuff. So uh, Andrea, the floor is yours. Go for it. Thank you very much. Before I share my screen, um, I'm super happy Michael is here because uh, I'm from the, the, the same side, from all web JavaScript developer side. Um, happy to answer either here or in Discord messages, uh, anything you would like to know more about. Um, and Be so careful when you off. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not on this call, by the way. Um, no, <laughs> just kidding. Um, so I I can share my screen, right? Is that OK? Yep, go for it. OK. Right, oh, or maybe you want to see it. Let me try this. If you, if you have issues, please let me know so I can save some bandwidth. Um, so we, we're looking at Discord inception at the moment. Yeah, that's awesome, isn't it? So. Um, like Nicolette mentioned already, we released a 2024 3.1 version and we released something which is good, but not good enough. So <laughs> uh, that's, that, that, that's a learning process that we are doing all the time. It's like, okay, maybe this time we should have asked for more feedbacks before, before releasing, but the, the thing works and we are happy about it, but um, because Michael asked how you think about issues and, and things from the JavaScript world. So in this case, we wanted to provide a simplified Fetch API. The thing with Fetch API used by PyoDide or MicroPython, it, it's uh, interpreter dependent. Um, in return, because they, they just use the JS dot fetch thing, where when you ask for a JSON, when you ask for a right, buffer, uh, they return just a JavaScript representation, or let's say a JS proxy of the representation of the data that came back from the from the request. Um, that's cool and everything on the JavaScript world, but in the Python world, there's no such a JS proxy. And you actually want, just for a JSON from, from, any, from any request, you actually want um, either a dictionary or a list, or that's the most common use cases for JSON, or either a string, a number, or I mean, you just want, you don't want, you don't want JavaScript and you don't want to deal with skip in direction. So what we thought it was cool, maybe I can zoom in here a little bit, is that how about we make it super easy for everyone to um, just fetch that JSON and that's all you have to wait. So we don't have to explain that the fetch API itself returns once you await it the first time, a response object that you have to check the response object. And then if nothing, if everything was okay, you have to eventually return the JSON from the fetch response object and also convert that result from JavaScript to Python. So what we did, it was like, how about we do this? Just JSON await fetch URL JSON. Unfortunately, and not, not not really unfortunately, it was kind of expected, but <laughs> but not so early. But it's good that it was so early, so we don't have a huge um, window of people confused about what we provide. Um, people say, hey, how about I want to just await the fetch URL and then check, if it was okay, check the status, check the headers, check all the things that more advanced users would expect from a Fetch API. Um, and so 
issues start piling up. Um, I and I wrote a discussion that became um, an issue, an official issue in the, in the project in the, in the repository. So what people want instead of these is just actually have wait fetches fetch URL and then eventually await um, yeah this one wait fetch URL and then eventually if it's okay or if the status is okay or no matter what the constraints away the response json this is actually reflecting one-to-one -one what javascript does except we still want those methods especially json array buffer and our extra implementation which is byte array to return something pythonic something that python can consume out of the box without thinking about it um and so we have users trying to use this API. They are very happy, but the uh, long story short, they ask pretty much exactly for the same thing. So they want to be able to reach the fetch thing. Um, and so here comes the demo. So here you can see from my BS Codium, um, my editor, sorry. Uh, you can see that I'm testing on Pyodite um, all the things that this fetch API can do. So we can await fetch text, even if the file is a JSON, await fetch JSON, even if the file will be a text, it doesn't really matter. And uh, we can have an array buffer, all the checks here. I'm sorry for the highlight. Uh, this is uh, my editor issue that doesn't understand script type I, and one day it will. Um, and then, I implemented these so we can await await fetch config json byte array so basically we can ensure that if you just await a fetch url you can also expect all the primitives and methods that we are providing to simplify everyone life and this is going to be available only PyScript fetch obviously <coughs> because there's no such method in the in the um, the standard web counterpart and so and this is working this is working pretty well this is the bad array uh, it's actually uh printed twice because i've done the double the double check so we have a wait a wait fetch byte array and a wait a wait fetch config json but i can also do um Later is a wait fetch config JSON and I can I can print um, later okay uh, later, later status <clears throat> and eventually here I can just await later by the arrays and if I save this run this oh what happened and run this again uh, i should see true 200 this is the status and uh, i can also try latest headers and now i'm i'm putting myself in troubles because i never tried this but uh yeah there's no such thing as headers so it's gonna be like well, later later not latest later not latest yeah okay that, that's <laughs> a first one so now i don't know what i'm doing uh okay you're trying to treat it as a dictionary so put dot headers like you had originally yeah it was correct the first time i just misspelled the thing so i have headers as well object headers so that's the thing so we can await fetch config but whenever we want to then print the result we can do in this case it's about array but we can also do json and it's gonna do the same so this is the JSON actually, you see it's a string, but it's actually a, a real JSON. So if I do JSON, uh, oh gosh, uh, do I need to do fetch? Uh, no, now in this case is fetch because it's a dictionary. So it's a proper Python dictionary and I should have, no, no. <laughs> and I should have JSON fetch. <laughs> Okay. Well, wh what am I supposed to do? This is helping me out. So this is a so, Python dictionary. Uh, so the JSON, JSON returns a Python. 
a, 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 a data structure, right? So it should be just square brackets fetch. No, no, no. I mean, the the, the, the object it's a coroutine, so it should be awaited. I think you should you want to put a parentheses oh, around oh, it. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you, Antonio. That's the thing. Uh, so, uh, well done, Antonio. Me. Eagle eyes. And so now, right now, I don't have the fetch I had before. I just have the content of fetch. Thank you very much, Antonio. Indeed, Welcome. again. And so, yeah, this works. Um, surprisingly so, or not so much, uh, this doesn't work. Let me just control Z a few things away. This doesn't work in... Oh. Okay, this doesn't work in MicroPython. Because we have an issue with proxies. <laughs> and this is something I, I had to understand today, that we, we have a lot of improvements in the MicroPython side. But this thing didn't work. And so, because Antonio is here, so maybe I can pick your brain a little bit. Um, okay, first of all, some background. There's no way to do these. Instead of these that return something that is magic enough, there's, I, I, I couldn't find a way to do a thing that fetch. And no matter what I have in here, I couldn't find a way to override or return something that allows me to do both await fetch and await fetch oh. Oh, okay Ding. Ding. this this is not happening and i thought okay i can do that in javascript why i cannot do that in so in python so the, the first thing that i I thought when you when you showed the thesis, how the hell is possible? Because yes. I don't know how to make it working. So yeah. Now you know. Okay, uh, 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 Fabio's got uh, his hand uh, up. He's been very patient. Fabio, go for it, matey. No, cool. Um, I I would actually like to challenge this and do an exercise before we even go to the technical solution. I I as a user would prefer two distinct things one that is actually a one-to-one a -one fetch API to the JavaScript API so that it's a more complex use case. I can do a lot of, uh, you know, everything I want there. And if we want to actually have um, uh, another API that is, e well, I don't want to say easier, simpler in theory, and you don't, you, you may not have access to all things like, um, status and response and other things. We, we just do a easy fetch, fast fetch, whatever it is. But mixing the two, I think one is more complicated to users. Um, and two, uh, basically you're trying to fit something in a hole without actually knowing if it's needed first, right? Well, basically the principle of trying to, to keep things simple. Yep. And the reason we came out we came up with this solution is that there is already previous work and it was super welcomed and that's the thing. But in the JavaScript world is easier because you proxy the fetch and the proxy when they ask for a then the then is something that any await in front of any reference would ask for a then before eventually realizing there's no then there's no it's not a promise. So that's how sloppy and quirk promises are in the JavaScript world, but I couldn't find anything in the in the Python world that was that was similar. But the thing is that is that if we can have both, why not? So if we can have both these and these um sorry both 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 these and these working. I would say, why not? So for us, it's less to explain. If you just want the text, you don't want to deal with uh, um, status code. Okay, status. So you don't want to deal with the web uh, MDN API, fetch API, standard API. And things are not going to be fully standard anyway, because uh, we have a byte array, which is a is something else. So the idea was to make it as cool and as seamless as possible. It's it clearly we failed at 
uh, uh, making it as seamless as possible. But there is light mm. uh, in in this implementation, yeah. all in Pyodide, but not in MicroPython. But that's a different issue because MicroPython fails here. MicroPython doesn't understand promises, and this is another bug for the next version of MicroPython because this, for whatever reason, uh, can backfire on, on any JS API that expect a promise somewhere, and they cannot await it, or they cannot just concatenate uh, then and then and then and do other stuff. Fabi. So, uh, thanks, Antonio. Sorry, I, 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 I'll leave you talk. I, I'll let you talk <laughs> again. But thanks, Antonio, for telling me. I had no idea how that worked because it means that there was no solution and I just wasted my morning trying to find out a solution. But that was my conclusion, too. Well, we don't need to, right? Like, it, th th what's not possible is just you piping multiple thens but you can definitely just do await the first oh. and then await again right from a user perspective uh, it's uh it's it's just either fetch url you await this and you get a, a response or right. you await this and you get the text or the json well but what i'm saying is oh, it's right. because you want to force that syntax you could just be like resp equals fetch and then you do resp.json right that is allowed and works on both frameworks now ah, what you have to do is a response await fetch yep. URL. and then you have to do json is await response json and this has been right. a major pain point for a lot of developers because you you need this double await and when you do this you're already doing it wrong because here you should do if response okay and you need to know that response cannot be okay if response okay then you have a json otherwise you shouldn't have a json because maybe response mm. was not okay or maybe response was not okay but status and response status uh, or if not response okay so all this complexity about knowing how the Patch and response object work was the original idea was to get to 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 fade away this complexity. If we can provide both, so if you want to hook yourself into this situation and uh, equal four four, then response JSON because maybe the JSON is something like uh, um, error block, you know. So there are APIs like this as well. So this is a valid use case. You want to be sure that people can actually hook themselves this logic, but not necessarily the common use case. The common use case is, is, is what I wrote at the beginning. The common use case is that people just have to repeat themselves and write these. And when they write these, they are exactly in this situation. So this is right, what we the, try the, to, to simplify. Uh, Mark, Mark, just so uh, you know, Martin's got his hand up as well. So, um, it's a background. I'm not seeing hands. Sorry, I'm sharing my yeah, screen. No, 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 no. Don't worry, don't worry. That's why I'm, I'm, I must apologize for interrupting, but that's why I'm <laughs> interrupting because I know that, that you're not, not seeing hands. So I've got, I've, I've got Martin with his hand up for about five minutes and then, then Fabio with his hand up as well. So, Martin. Yeah, I, I, I think maybe the, the simple syntax of being able to get the response back and check it. I mean, that's what we do anyway, right? Uh, um, because you sh you should always check for okay before you get the the, the JSON out. I think maybe there's excuse there's, me, I'll be back in a sec. I think if not, I think not it, 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 sorry, not necessarily. No. The response ahead, can be false, but the status can be something that in the page returns a JSON object. I've seen that, and I tell you, response OK is not the best guard. What we do here is to simplify the guard. If it's OK, it returns, and it already well, checks if it's not OK. But right. hold on, hold on, hold on. There are two gonna, different things. Gonna, right. uh, go ahead, Martin, sorry. So my suggestion would be have the low-level version just do fetch and, and just a double await. If we want a simplified layer on top of that, then we put that in PyWeb. 
that's that would be my yeah. suggestion so there's so there's two layers so we're not we're not making anything because the other thing is right short term we really like this to work in micropython right now right and we can make it work in micropython if we do the simple fetch the other issue with the simplified version of res of just doing the dot json the way it is now is that it raises an exception and it raises the current exception that it raises though when i looked before was 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 a base exception class and it would mean that the only way that i could find out if there was an what the error that had caused the exception would would be to parse the message string in the exception so if we do have that simplified layer it should at least raise an exception which is not of a base exception class and it should have data in the exception that i can extract the status code without parsing the string of the message I must apologize. I had to take an urgent phone call. Um, uh, so I'm not even sure who's next. I think when well, I left, it was going to be Fabio. And then I could see Andre with his hand up. Yeah. 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 I just, just going to comment this and then I, I need to drop anyway in two minutes. I totally agree with Martin, uh, even just from a perspective of building up APIs, right? We don't need to put everything in the same place or, or not. Actually, for simplicity, as Martin said, a double weight just works. It's the available way in Python anyway, uh, and it provides a foundation that we can build on top. Like, and we we can decide where to put the new, the simpler one. So it's not a, a choice of one or the other. It's actually building the two, but in a way that is sustainable and and can be you know uh, released at stages. So it's better something than nothing. And we can uh, provide the the full API right now, and that supports also MicroPython. And then even right now, we can just do uh, the the API on top that is supported in Pyodide, and coming soon support for MicroPython. Right? Like uh, anyway, yeah. Got to drop. Uh, um, but thank you, Fabio. Really before good. you go, just so that you hear this, um, we'll probably have more of a technical discussion on those issues that uh, Andrea has linked to. So if you want to. You know, provide an opinion, take part in this discussion. Um, go to the GitHub issues where we're discussing this. Um, Andrea, thank you very much for your patience. The floor's yours, matey. <clears throat> yeah, no, the, the, my, my Yoli. So, first of all, um, the moment we had to write documentation, I wasn't 100% sure this was the right path to take. Um, and the moment we had to explain something else in the documentation, I thought, hmm, maybe, maybe, maybe this might be confusing because it looks too much like the web API. It actually doesn't do exactly what the web API does. Now, my only comment is, okay, I'm okay with double await if you are all in. Beside the fact that I fixed everything and the fact that uh, I found a bug in MicroPython. So it doesn't matter if this lands in MicroPython. MicroPython has issues with promises, regardless. So we've, we've, won, it, we've won anyway, Andrea, is what you've said. <laughs> Thanks to your help for the work that you've done today. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy I found those MicroPython issues because MicroPython with promises is broken right now. Yeah. So that's to answer Martin about that we want is to work in MicroPython, which it does already, <laughs> but you want a better error message or a better exception. Yeah. Uh, sorry, um, I, I can't remember how it's called in Python, but uh, it's all there and it's working already as it is if we want to maintain this thing. My only concern is that we already shipped, so either we fix this sooner than later and we ship again mm. sooner than later, or and, and we we provide the double await and we just say, hey, this is like the fetch API, but <laughs> we all expose these methods because we don't expose all the methods, like form data is not there because it makes literally no sense right now as a Python transformer, um, and, uh, and we're good. I mean, I'm up. I'm up for any solution if it makes you happy and actually it's much easier than what I propose right now because right now I'm dealing with uh, Antonio was concerned so that concerns me too because right now it was uh, it was a hack over not not really a hack but it was a promise based consequence and it was using not a sync uh, coroutine and, and all this kind of stuff so this is 
beautifully working in Pyodide, but it's ugly as hell for me, for myself personally, to to uh, to, to look at this code and say, oh gosh, well, what are we doing? And also there is the, well, I didn't show you the response, which also passed through all those utilities yeah. that I wrote. So this works, but it's not super nice. And uh, at the same time, we want to not confuse users. I guess the mistake was at the, at, at the beginning of the idea is like, we don't want to do the double await. And in JavaScript, it's very easy to not do the double await and that results in exactly the same API. But if you want to do just these, you can do that. Okay, so, no so I, I, it, it, for, for, for so, the- Yeah, I'm saying, yeah, I'm saying, if you want to do the double await and come back on that, and I will be super happy to change everything I wrote today. I just maybe <laughs> put a, in a in a in, in, quick, in a comment quick. apart. Yeah. But uh, but we are good. Yeah. Okay. So um, in, in the interest of time, because um, believe it or not, uh, I, I'm going to have to go in ten minutes as well. Uh, and yeah. when when I go, the whole meeting stops because I'm the host. Um, so I want to make sure that Model T uh, Michael has his chance uh, as well. Uh, mm. But very very quickly. Um, I want to summarize what you've just said, Andrea, and just informally have a show of hands or a thumbs up or something like that. So uh, what Andrea was saying is actually we should just do the simple thing of having the double await so that we are mimicking the fetch. That means we can we don't have to do all the hacky stuff that uh, Andrea has uh, done today. And thank you, Andrea, for doing that investigation. The big win from that is that the whole promises stuff in MicroPython. Uh, we now have a better context on that and we can pass that on to Damien because he's currently doing all of that stuff for us. Um, so that's a win for us. Um, but I mean, what, what's the feeling in the room? Um, you know, uh, to, to double await or not to double await? uh martin okay we've got thumbs up from josh for a double await um all right yeah i can see you hammering the button there josh uh uh martin is that a thumbs up from you yes uh I, I, yeah okay okay so um i must apologize uh because the uh let's try this with a single await was my suggestion so i kind of feel a little bit guilty <laughs> that this is all caused by my stupid idea uh, when we should have just done the yeah i know josh it's terrible isn't it um uh we we should have done done the, the simple thing first martin I, I don't think it's a bad idea. I think that's maybe something that we come back to, the idea of a single await if it's possible. Yeah. But right now, I think the lowest level, because um, like like Andrea says, it's nice for people. If you know you're getting JSON, it's nice to get Jason. Yeah, yeah. Jason. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you know that's... So I think if that's doable at some later date, maybe in PyWeb, then I think... I think I don't think it's a bad idea. Okay. Um, um, my only concern with the... was Was really was with the about that part of the API was first, I wanted the response API because I want to be able to check the response before I do anything. Cause, and then it, the, the other thing was the exception raising was the fact that the only way, if I used the simplified, if, imagine that the simplified single await way is done. If I'm trying to detect whether I got a 404 yeah. because that was a perfectly valid thing from my API, then I, I have to parse the string of the message yeah. of the of the exception error message to get the data. Code. To work yeah, yeah, yeah. Four hundred four, not a status. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, but yeah. but I don't think it's a bad, I don't think it's a bad idea. I just think it's yeah. We maybe just punt a, a little bit on yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, number one, apologies from me for jumping the gun with that concept. Number two, I just want to call out Andre for the amazing work that he's been doing and the infinite patience he's been showing. Uh, <laughs> With, with me and everybody else changing things from underneath him because I know, we all know, we're all software engineers, what it feels like to have things shifting around you and how frustrating that can be. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. Um, that ultimately, we're all going to have the same fetch API no matter which version of Python you're using as your interpreter with PyScript. And I think that that is a good thing. And it's also an obvious answer to when people do this because re-implementing fetch is what we've all done several times over and the fact that we've managed to, you know we're putting it in the PyScript namespaces is important okay in the interest of time if it's okay with everybody I, i'm going to move on to, to michael um because uh i've got a well i've got to go in 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 10 minutes at, at the most so michael the floor is yours i didn't have an agenda um i'm happy to talk 
in and ask some questions. Um, Andre, the um, the promise chaining as a as somebody who's been doing JavaScript, lots and lots of promises for the last five years. I didn't even know you could do that. I always do multiple awaits. I just went through and looked at my code. I went and looked online. I couldn't find an example where people are chaining a single await to multiple promises. It's clever. I've never seen it. Um, now, maybe I'm, I'm an audience of one, so with, for what that's worth. Um, so just to kind of recap what I said earlier, and what I'm hoping to do on this call is establish a relationship and start sort of loitering without calling too much attention to myself or too much alarm. But I um, I've spent the last year rewriting Excel, and I'm trying to be very faithful to the UI of Excel Online. So it's it's not a broken spreadsheet. It literally will be, if I'm if my hit my goal, it will have 100% parity with Excel. Okay. And I'm focusing on it, supporting millions of rows, just like Excel does. Sort of all the file formatting, all the styling, all the rendering. With the one notable exception being instead of the native programming language being VB, it would be Python and JavaScript. Um, if you, you know, to give a demo, and I, I would almost rather not share because if I share my screen, I don't know what's going to happen with my network connection. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a link to, to a demo. <clears throat> I can figure out in Discord. Or maybe I'll just tell you. It's demo.sheetxlextralarge.com. And what if you go to this demo, if you go to the main site, there's a bunch of other demos. But if you go to this demo, it will open up a blank spreadsheet. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm looking at it yeah. right now. And it's and it the screen captures recording what I'm looking at as well. So please talk over, and I'll try and move the UI okay, as, you, as you demo it, as you tell me what you're doing. Okay, yeah. Great. Now, the reason I'm asking you to go here is because if you... So, so, sorry, can anyone please yeah. share this? I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, now. sorry. If, someone else, if someone else can share, share, I don't want to put my network connection. Okay, so Josh, if you share your screen with it, then we can look at it. Thank you, Josh. Now, uh, now the, reason, the reason I've asked you to go here is this is what I've been building for almost a year, but it's been part-time. I'm now going to start doing this full time starting April 1st. I'm wrapping something up. But what I wanted you to look at in this demo was this doesn't use a server. This is a single React component, and it's built where there's a layer and there's documentation on this, but it's built as a TypeScript standalone library that can be ran without the UI. And then there's a React UI that sits on top of it that will be MIT open source. And that's kind of the technical architecture, but there's no backing. And I've done this deliberately. If you if you happen to, um, I don't know who's streaming, Josh. If you open up the Chrome debugger and maybe mm -hmm. dock it so it's on the right hand side, oh, uh... you will, it will, it, it's on, on oh, no. Windows. It's Control Shift I. So Command Mac, Shift I. Command, oh, Command oh. Shift I. I think on a Mac. <laughs> no. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, it's control shift uh, right where it says more tools and there's a menu in the top right the three dots right click inspect yeah i'm trying uh, right, right click, click. All, the, the three dots all the way in the top right you're you're doing my three oh, yeah. dots, which is the tree oh button. i see there we go and then if you now do you see on the okay well this works too but if you there's three dots on this thing and you can right click it on the right and you get a slightly better view. But this is okay. This is perfect. Just the way it is. Now, what I wanted to show you was, and this is where it's interesting. Now, on the top, you can drag and drop Excel documents. You can copy paste. Whatever you can do in Excel, the plan is to be able to do it up here. Um, I'm act actively working on drawings and charts at the moment. But do you see down here on the bottom where it says sheet Excel dot more examples and sheet Excel dot yep. get workbook dot get range? There's a full developer API that you can interact with this model. And as you're interacting with the model, it will interact um, It'll interact with the UI, and you can even have it collaborate and interact with others all real time. This API I've built to be very JSON friendly. Yes, for example, if you do that example and just copy paste it, you'll oh, see cool. that it put the values yeah. up the top left. And I want to, what I'm going to do is have this so that as you're making 
Excel function calls, those function calls will do Python callbacks, and you can code, this API will be exposed as a Python interface so that you can manipulate this thing directly in Python. And of course, PyScript is the plan to do this. So on the right, and I'm not the first person to think of this, but on the right, it'll open up. You can either do it right in the console like this. You'll be able to embed this in your own application inside of Visual Studio Code, or it's a React component. Or I will have something that will launch Monaco so you can execute PyScript right in this. So depending on how you want to go about it, you can sit here and write your functions right in PyScript right within the browser. So there's no backend Python required. There's no server whatsoever. So PyScript is a very important component for anyone that wants to do Python functions in my in my library. This is what I'm doing. This is this is incredible. Thanks, I mean, well. it, it's just <laughs> I'm grinning like a Cheshire cat because I, I know what what's gone into this, the amount of engineering as well. Um, it's not easy. Yeah, there's some, there's some, there's some hard parts. If you go to more, I'm not going to see her go through them all, but if you go to Sheet Excel, uh, more examples, it's in the thing. You can just copy and paste it right there too. Now it'll give you a whole list. There's a ton and ton of stuff in the documentation, but this just gives you a smattering of some ideas of how you can do things. Wow. If you hit the control down on the, um, UI up on the top. Control down in Excel is is go to the next cell with data, but there is no data in your spreadsheet. So if you hit, it'll go all the way down. So you'll see I support a million rows. Wow. 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 Um, I, are there any questions so anyway. apart from sort of jaws hitting the floor? Are there any questions? <laughs> and this was just meant to be an intro. Yeah. You have plenty of questions, I'm sure, because I want to. You're you're a key component to my strategy. So, Any D key component. So I I just want to say, you know, Michael, mm -hmm. uh, just just ask questions in Discord. Um, we're you know we're Absolutely. very focused on our community, and uh, you know, as you know, with PyScript, it's early days as well. Um, it, it, so me. any feedback, all of that sort of stuff, just just let us know and. Um, uh, you know, we will, uh, you know, we'll try and help and support you as, as, as best we can. Um, if I were you, uh, also, if you're anywhere in the Pittsburgh area for PyCon, uh, which is the second week in May. I'm, I'm in Jersey. It's a five hour drive. I thought about doing it. Yeah. 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 Okay. First so there is a web, yeah. there is a web assembly summit that some of us are organizing that will involve PyScript, MicroPython, PyAdide, uh, Wazzy, some folks at Microsoft as well. Um, and so please come along to that if, you, if you're able to, uh, because that that will be hopefully a who's who of people working in this particular space in Python. That was in the, when is that the end of April, early May? It's at beginning of Google May, uh, middle, I think something like the 14th, 15th of May. If you go to us.pycon.org, you'll, you'll you are, see it. I, I, I'm there. Thank you very much. I, you know, I'll make a point. Yep. I wasn't planning to, but now that I've gotten a shot of it. Awesome. Awesome. Martin, you had a question. Yeah. So first of all, brilliant job. And visually from a front end perspective, really nice. Just really, yeah. really like visually good. So my question was really just a little technical question. What, what is the underlying? So it's a reactor app. Have you used any particular, um, libraries css libraries or what or frameworks or so it's i've been very careful this there's a if you go to the documentation on this martin there's um there's an explanation of all the dependencies and this the, how it stacks up but, to, but in summary what i showed you in the console when you when you open up the console and you run the the inner the you the the um javascript version of it that's just typescript there's no third party there i'm using some of um XLS is um, number format parsing, but it's a forked version because I needed to support a bunch of features they didn't support. But other than that, it's just a standalone TypeScript library. Then I use, then I layer on React. Then, then I have a very, very thin styling layer that's Emotion and MUI on the top, just for the toolbars across the top. But if you didn't want to use that, you you didn't want to use MUI and you had a competing, you'd have to rewrite the toolbar, but you wouldn't need to rewrite anything else. If you didn't want to use React, you could still use the core library to import and export from Excel, manipulate things, all the behaviors, 
and all the calculations and everything would still work. It's under concepts. If you go to concepts, thank you for opening this up. On concepts on the left, yeah. under modules, and that shows the sort of high level model view controller. But here it'll show you the dependencies of where everything is. And as you add functionality, you, you inherit more dependencies. But specifically where it says sheet Excel models on the middle left, that is the that is the eighty percent of my code base, and that's pure TypeScript. Okay. That's, it's really, really awesome. Yeah, really awesome. Um, uh, Andre, a quick question. Hopefully, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> um, as you are here, then in this, which is awesome. Um, what was your most painful point of PyScript, or and then, and then I'm gonna ask: Are you using Pyodide or MicroPython, or uh, is that anything? I'm, that you think I'm using Pyodide at the moment. Yeah. And I'm using okay. PyDide at the moment, but I'm considering MicroScript for the function callbacks where they're where they can when you're if you're just doing simple functions yeah. and you don't need the full environment. Yeah. I want okay. it to be so, toggle. Is for that me, anything, honestly the hard thing should, anything you think we should improve for your use case or uh, well anything? honestly <laughs> honestly I'm hoping to pick up from you. So the biggest challenge I'm having right now isn't your product. It is some of the problems you're trying to solve, it's really around the limitations of threading in the browser. Specifically, how you do shared memory. There's no, you know, you've got the single data structure, and I'm sure you know this is terrible. So as I'm reading your documentation, not only was I going to use your product, but I see you're struggling, and I don't know that there's answers, quite frankly, but I see you're struggling with some of the same things I am, which is if you want it to be multi-threaded and you've got a big data structure, do you copy it? How do you do weights? How do you how do you create interrupts in those? How do you make it preemptive? So a lot of the same problems I'm having, I see you're having too. So um, I don't have answers. I don't have problems that you that I can help you solve, but I have problems that you do too. Okay. Right. Just so, so, as a quick answer, quick answer. We have uh, interrupts, pyodite, and. Uh, Multi-threading is saw. you need to create multiple multiple workers. Unfortunately, they are gonna end up inevitably to the main thread. So the main thread is gonna be the bottleneck right now. And you have but, to uh, duplicate memory. Yeah, happy happy to happy to expand in Discord or privately by yeah. Discord. I, I was just gonna say because we're 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 we're, we're, we're running out of time. Um, and uh, you know, uh, I'm I'm conscious of people's you know uh, things that they need need to get get going. This is incredible work. Let's continue this discussion on Discord because you know we like technical discussions. It's helpful for us to see how users are using our work and things like that. Um, and, and with that, because I'm painfully aware of the the we, we've kind of gone over the time now already. Um, that was a fantastic. Uh, community call. Thank you for folks participating. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to stop the recording now. Uh...